my name's Catherine. I was baptised on New Year's Eve, just over a week ago. What a glorious day that was. I'm now at Denby's Vineyard in the spectacular Surrey Hills where I like to spend as much time as possible. I'm going to read you my testimony from my baptism. I've always considered myself a Christian, but realised it was in little more than name only. I grew up in a noisy, chaotic and very happy Christian home. There was very little money, but the seven of us had all that we needed, including an abundance of love and a sense of stability and security. On Sundays, my father went to the Roman Catholic Church. He converted from Church of England after spending eight years as a missionary in India, where he ran a Christian bookshop while the rest of us attended the local Anglican church with my mother, who later became church warden. I know now that God was very much at the heart of their lives, and they set a fine example of Christian values, and never once did they do or say anything to lessen my love and respect for them. But ver verbally, they were both so very private and silent about their faith. I was christened as a baby and confirmed at the young age of 10. But the ritual of the weekly services never held much meaning. The many creeds, confessions, prayers and responses we collectively read from the service sheet were empty words to me. As an independent teenager, those Sundays were soon taken over with part-time jobs, boyfriends and hobbies, and God was forgotten about. Some years later, and I'm married to Roger, we have a baby on the way, and I'm so overwhelmed by the miracle of this precious life growing inside me. I felt so blessed, and this joy and gratitude was drawing me towards God. I checked out the churches in Dorking and settled on one that became my spiritual home for the next 30 years. However, in all that time, I still failed to form a real relationship with God. I wasn't abiding in the Lord and realised now that I was a false believer. Then many things changed in 2020 when much of the nation was paralysed with fear. At a time when I expected the body of the church to grow exponentially, it closed its doors. These doors remained shut and when finally reopened, the fear was perpetuated. Apparently, for every day of the year, there's a Bible verse that tells us not to be afraid. 365 times we're told not to be anxious. However loving and well-meaning the intentions of churches were, I no longer felt able to be in a place that preached faith but practiced fear. Everything since then has brought me to where I am now. Internally, the past three to four years have been incredibly unsettling. I've experienced much inner turmoil and sadness. The obvious attacks on faith and family have been worrying. The divisions in society confusing and isolating. The corruption of institutions alarming and my increasing awareness of evil frightening. At times I've been overwhelmed and despairing of this ever apparent and pervasive wickedness with seemingly no hope for humanity. As existing relationships became strained, I developed new friendships and moved in different circles. But they've been heavily dominated by spiritual New Age influences, resulting in even more confusion and doubt as I found myself being pulled in that direction. Disturbingly, I was becoming cold and detached, mistrusting and cynical. I didn't like the changes I was seeing in myself. The God-shaped hole in my heart was growing and I yearned for it to be filled and for my developing heart of stone to become one of flesh. 
but little was changing. But that's because I never really understood the good news. I'd never actually read the Bible. I'd occasionally open it, get confused, even bored, then give up. How ridiculous. I've been blind, deaf and ignorant of God's word all this time. If it's hard enough to assemble an IKEA wardrobe without instructions, or change a tap washer without a YouTube video, how could I call myself a Christian if I hadn't studied the guidebook? If I didn't understand the fulfilled prophecy of Christ's crucifixion, the need for his sacrifice for my salvation, the magnitude of his death on the cross, or the hope and reinsurance that it brings. There certainly have been times throughout my life when I have felt close to God, including two profound memories of being consumed with anxiety when I wholeheartedly prayed for a turn of events and experienced a sudden deep sense of calm, peace, and assurance that my prayers would be answered, and they were. When I had the first of my beautiful boys, I couldn't believe I could love someone so much, and in addition to the love I already felt for my husband. And then a second son, and a third, and more unconditional love to give. If I had only one child, I couldn't love him any more, and if I had 20, I couldn't love them any less. I realize now that's how God feels about each and every one of us. However much we fail him, disappoint and frustrate him, he continues to love us and yearns desperately for us to know him, to love, trust and obey him. I've been so fortunate this year. I've given glory and honor to God while cycling the beautiful lakes of Cumbria and the dales of Yorkshire had time to reflect at residential silent retreats and in September took myself off to the Isle of Wight for 11 days with the sole desire to grow closer to God as I walked the circumference of the island alone, fully immersed in nature, giving praise and gratitude to God along every step of the coastal path. This was such a joyful experience, filled with God incidences. It was simply sublime. Then, on the 8th of October, on the invitation of a couple of new friends, I came to Disciples Church. In that first sermon, Aaron said, If you've never read the Bible, why not? Why not indeed? That day, I did start reading it, and with fresh eyes. I now find, find that I have a thirst for God and a hunger for his word. The past three months have been filled with aha moments. Everything seems to be clicking into place and making so much sense. I've now realized how connected and interwoven the Bible is, the Old Testament and the New. It's like fitting together the pieces of a giant jigsaw. I'm a novice with so much to learn. I didn't realize just how little I knew. I've got a lot of catching up to do. And it's also fascinating and exciting to me now. And I love the Christian fellowship, both after the service and at breaking bread, which is so God-centered. Conversation revolves almost entirely around Christ. It's wonderful. When I get home, I'm itching to pass on what I've learned to Roger and have started evangelizing to friends and family. Whatever the future holds for us on earth, I can rejoice in the knowledge that I am saved, that my sins have been washed away through the blood of Christ, that everything is within God's power, and that his plan will result in glory for all who love and follow Christ.